Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just another tinfoil hat. Welcome to my show. Today, we are going to be discussing a fantastic case, that of the Uniontown Unknown. Now, before we get started on this case, I want to say that it was investigated by the infamous Stan Gordon and features prominently in his fantastic book, Silent Invasion, the Pennsylvania UFO Bigfoot Casebook. So if you find this case interesting, which I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that it is very interesting, definitely give that book a look. It is simply fantastic. I think I did a review for the Silent Invasion book some time ago on my channel. So but yeah, this case is one of those that to me is one of the absolute best examples of a high strangeness Sasquatch encounter. Now, on the night of February 6, 1974, a woman only referred to across any rendition of this case in pseudonym, um, in Silent Invasion, she's Mrs. Ham, in some other accounts I've seen, Mrs. A, was sitting at home watching TV. Now, she lived in an isolated home in a well-wooded area near Uniontown, Pennsylvania. As she was sitting enjoying her show, around 10 o'clock she heard what she believed were this pack of wild dogs. Apparently, um, this particular pack of wild dogs was a real issue in the area at this time, and she thought that she heard them rummaging through her trash. So, again, very used to these dogs in the area. She wanted to scare them away, so she went and got her shotgun, turned on the outside light, and stepped onto the front porch. Now, imagine her surprise when, instead of facing off against this particular pack of wild dogs, she instead saw, standing about six feet away from her, a seven-foot-tall, ape-like thing. For all intents and purposes, Bigfoot. When this hairy being saw her, it immediately raised both hands in the air. Now, unfortunately for it, Mrs. Ham thought that it was going to leap at her, so she fired straight into the midsection of the creature. Now, I say unfortunately, but the truth of the matter is, as you may have guessed, it appeared, I should say, unhurt, but here's the strange thing it actually disappeared into a flash of light. Mrs. Ham said that it was exactly like someone taking a picture, and that there was no accompanying sound or smell. She just fired at this creature, struck it right in the very center of its torso, and flash, it appeared in, disappeared in this flash of light. Now, as you can imagine, Mrs. Ham was rather shocked by this encounter. You know, first of all, she goes outside to scare away this pack of dogs. Instead, it's Bigfoot. So, of course, she fires on Bigfoot, and then it vanishes in a flash of light. I could see being a little shocked by that. So she immediately ran into the house, and as she ran in, her phone rang. Here, it was her son-in-law, who lived with his family in a trailer about 100 feet away, had actually heard the shot and wanted to know what happened. So she told him. Um, in response, he ran over immediately, armed with a revolver. Now, as the son-in-law approached the house and reached the edge of this particular patch of woods, he said that he saw what he described as the shadows of four or five hairy people. Again, seven feet tall, ape-like with long arms and fiery red eyes moving towards him. Now, he actually fired twice at this group of beings, um, and again, it appeared to have absolutely no effect. And so then he just ran for cover in Mrs. Ham's home. Now, both frightened witnesses from the safety of Mrs. Ham's house saw bright red flashing or revolving lights hovering over the woods, which they compared kind of to like um, a spinning ornament. It was at that point that they called the police. Now, when the police arrived, there was absolutely no trace of the magical disappearing Sasquatches. However, all of the family animals in both properties were very upset. Cats and dogs were hiding and wouldn't come out. The horse wouldn't eat its oats. And as a matter of fact, um, Mrs. Ham's granddaughter, um, who was a baby at the time, cried all night and was deeply upset by what, I mean, we could surmise maybe it was the proximity of these bizarre phantasmic Sasquatches. Now, again, as evidenced by the sheer number of cases in Silent Invasion, you know, Pennsylvania was really beset by anomalies at this time. So it really comes as no surprise that both Mrs. Ham and her son-in-law had previous sightings of anomalous things. Now, Mrs. Ham had previously seen a strange flash of light in her yard, heard mysterious thumping noises, and even felt an unseen presence touch her shoulder. Um, also, the son-in-law had had an encounter with a Sasquatch-like being the previous November. He was out walking his dog when he saw a trespasser and called out. Now, said trespasser, trespasser was actually a tall, hair-covered ape-like being with glowing red eyes. Now again, these wild, this pack of wild dogs, I guess, was a real issue at the time as well. So the son-in-law always carried with him his trusty six-shooter. Now he emptied all rounds 
into this bizarre ape-like being, which disappeared in front of his very eyes. However, he could still hear the noise of it running away, even though nothing was visible. Apparently figuring that the six-shooter was simply not powerful enough to deal with this magical Bigfoot, he went back for his rifle. When he returned to the scene, the creature had by this time reappeared, and he then shot at it with the rifle. It responded by screaming like a crying baby, so loud that his wife could hear it from inside the trailer, but otherwise appearing unharmed. So, again, I promise that this was one of the best examples of Bigfoot High Strangeness, and I hope you're not disappointed, because there is a lot of stuff to cover here. I guess one of the first aspects to really occur to me is something I've been really interested in lately, and that is, again, the concept of light being at the core of paranormal encounters. Um, so, of course, we have the very dramatic vanishing into a flash of light by this strange being, as well as how each of the beings seen had eyes that were described as glowing or fiery, emitting light. Now, again, in the case uh, in February of 74, we have the proximity of, for all intents and purposes, a UFO, which appeared with more light, spinning lights, glowing. Um, not to mention, again, we have one of these fantastic encounters of, you know, for all intents and purposes, a cryptozoological um, sighting, even for as weird as these Sasquatches were, vanishing and having glowing eyes and all that, it still falls firmly in the realm of, hey, I saw Bigfoot. And then we have the proximity of, for all intents and purposes, again, a ufological sighting. So again, Bigfoot and UFO in pretty much the same vicinity. And again, this was incredibly common at the time in Pennsylvania. Now, I think too that a point that really this pins down is kind of the spectral nature of many cryptozoological encounters. Um, again, for more on this, you should definitely check out Where the Footprints End by Kutchen and Renner, because in many of these sightings, Bigfoot behaves very similarly to, you know, phantoms, phantasms, ghosts, hauntings. I mean, here, not only do we have it actually vanishing when physical contact of a bullet was made with the creature, in two cases, um, but we also have attendant kind of like poltergeist-esque phenomena. You know, Mrs. Ham's house was beset by a bizarre thumpings, rappings. She felt someone touch her when no one was there. In her son-in-law's no November 1973 encounter, he witnessed the being vanish, and then still unable to see anything, heard footsteps walking away. There is something extremely spectral about that. Now, a case that this actually really calls to mind, for me at least, is the infamous walking tree stumps or Kathy Reeves case. Um, one of the very first occurrences in that long-running case of really strange poltergeist and UFO activity was one of her initial sightings was of what she thought was someone trying to play a trick on her. She saw what she described as a flashlight with the end covered so that it didn't emit a beam, kind of moving around in a nearby field. Now, Kathy decided that it was in her best interest to throw a rock at whoever was trying to joke around with her, and in response, the entire field lit up with different lights. Um, so that, to me, really calls to mind how as soon as the first entity in this case was shot in the February case, four or five more appeared. Um, it's almost like you know, if one is struck down, they all kind of rise up almost Hydra-like. So, I mean, I think too that the really important question that this raises is, why on earth, if Bigfoot is some sort of specter, is it going through people's trash? Well, if you enjoyed this case on the Uniontown Unknown, please like, and if you're new to this field of crop circles, go ahead and subscribe to see what weirdness the future may have in store. Till then, you can keep up with whatever else I'm doing on my free blog on patreon.com slash just another tinfoil hat. And for today, I am Zelia Edgar, signing off. Do we?